First and foremost, I want to congratulate you. By clicking on this video, you're doing two things. You're saying, A, I want to change something, and B, I need help. I want to be not only your beacon of hope, but I also want to lend you my hand and lift you up. So here I'm going to show you a proven strategy to get in shape and to get started as a totally unfit person. But before we get started, I have a gift for you. Check the first link in the description. 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts for free. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag hier. What I'm going to show you is a system that we use with our clients in real life. This system is going to work very well, but if you want to take a shortcut, hire a good coach. But I have to put up a disclaimer. There's two types of coaches that I want you to avoid. Number one is the tough guy coach. That's the type of coach who's always going to let you know that you're not enough. Number two, avoid hiring the perfectionist. That's the type of coach who doesn't know the difference between skill and form. You can be very skillful with the exercise, yet your form might still look different than mine. So let's jump into the system that's gonna help you to get started as a person that never touched a kettlebell before in your life. Let's start with the assessment first. The first thing that we're gonna take a look at is your posture. Now a stick simulates a good posture. So I'm connecting the stick now with my hip, back, and the back of my head. If you feel like that this is normal to you, then your posture is good. If you feel like you have to do a lot of corrections, then your posture needs some improvement. The second thing that we're going to learn is the hinge. We connect the stick with the same, in the same way like we did before. Hip, back, and back of my head. Now I'm pushing my hips back. My upper body leans forward. Now my knees are unlocking. I'm not bending, but I don't keep them straight neither. I'm unlocking the knees. Now I have this posture like a ski jumper that's getting ready to jump. Now I come back up, fully extending my hips, coming back down and back up. If you do it the right way, you should feel some tension right here in the rear part of your upper legs. The reason why we need the hinge is because it's a fundamental exercise when it comes to kettlebell training. Number three that we're going to take a look at is your arm extension because we want to see what your shoulder is like. Many people are tight in the shoulder as well as in the hips. So we already took care of the hips. Now let's check out the shoulder. Now you grab the stick, hold it out in front of you and now bring both of your arms over your head. And once the arm is over your head, you want to pull your arm back and see what that feels like. If that feels good, you can bring your arms closer together and now bring the arms or the biceps even closer to your ear, keep the arms fully extended and pull the arms back. If you feel like you're able to move backwards fairly easily and you don't start hyperextending your back, then your shoulder mobility is fine. If not, you probably need some work to mobilize your shoulders. Once we've taken care of the assessment, we want to move forward into coaching. Now, since I'm not in the room with you, you have to take care of this by yourself. When you work out, you want to watch out for two signals that your body can give you. Signal A is pain. Let's just assume we're doing a back squat. And now all of a sudden, you feel an excruciating pain anywhere in your body. You may want to get this checked first because your body is telling you that maybe you're not yet ready for this exercise. The second thing that you want to look out for is your cardiovascular system or your heartbeat. Now, if we go into high intensity training or you take it a step further because we always have to take it a little bit further than where we are right now in order for our bodies to change something. Doesn't mean that we have to go into the red zone all day. But since we want to do this, we have to take care that our cardiovascular system is catching up. Experiencing fatigue is normal. I'm just assuming I'm doing back squats and now I'm huffing and puffing and I got to rest a little bit and I have to catch my breath. What is not normal is if I'm doing back squats and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, oh, wait, wait a second. Wait, woof, woof. Everything is going like this, then your cardiovascular system 
is not able to catch up properly. That's the thing that you want to avoid. Now, once we've taken care of these important signals, we want to move forward into safety. Number one is hands-free. As you can see, I'm wearing an Apple Watch. Now, I always take this thing off when I train with a kettlebell. If I'm doing a clean, for example, I might damage the kettlebell, damage my watch, or hurt myself. Don't worry, you'll still burn calories, even if you don't track it with your watch. The second thing that we want to follow is flat feet. Now, I'm wearing old school Metcons from Nike, and they have a very thin sole. Makes it perfect for lifting kettlebells. Another thing that you can also do is go barefoot. Some people like to train in their socks, but if you train in socks, be careful that you don't trip. Number three is easy to understand, enough space. Just make sure that nothing is in your close proximity as you are working out with your kettlebell. And number five, you want to understand how to maneuver a kettlebell. Many beginners tend to pick up the weight with their back. This is a bad movement habit that can lead to serious problems down the road. So instead of lifting with your back, you want to lift with your hips. And this starts even before you engage into your training. Now that we've taken care of the assessment, coaching, and safety measures, let's check out breathing. There's three types of breathing. Number one is natural breathing. Now, most people tend to breathe on a very shallow level, but this is the natural way to breathe. So I don't wanna confuse you too much in telling you that this is the wrong way to breathe. Yes, there's a better way to breathe, but if you start learning exercises, you want to focus your brain's RAM on learning the exercises first. Once you understand the exercise, you can take care of your breathing. Our refined breathing method is called HERB. I call it hyperrhythmic breathing. Now, one of the core components of HERB or hyperrhythmic breathing is forceful exhaling. I want to use my breathing muscles, so to speak, to throw the trash out. If I want good air to come in as quickly as possible, I have to throw out the trash as quickly as possible. The second component of herb is the rhythmic part. When you train with the kettlebell, there's a lot of rhythm going on. For example, if I do a jerk, listen to my breathing. I adapt my breathing to the rhythm of the exercise. And the last component of hyperrhythmic breathing or herb is breathing into the nose, or as we like to call it, prefer the nose as long as possible, or nose first. If we start breathing into the nose more, there's a host of benefits that our bodies can profit from. Now listen to the way I breathe into the nose. Now the final type of breathing is recovery breathing, or just catching your breath. Now, the more advanced you get with kettlebell training, the more you can really focus on herb or hyperrhythmic breathing and never lose it throughout the whole set. But if you're just getting started, it might be that you have to catch your breath. You start with herb. And now you get tired. which is totally normal. So now that we've done the assessment, we know our body's two most important signals, we've taken care of proper safety measures, and we know the three different types of breathing, we now do a proper workout. I'm gonna show you a couple of exercises that are very simple and easy to do. Exercise number one is the hand-to-hand -hand deadlift. I stand shoulder width apart over the kettlebell. When I look down, the handle stands alongside approximately the middle of my foot. Now I'm hinging, remember? The first exercise from the beginning. Now I wanna grab the kettlebell, but I can't. So I have to bend my knees a little bit. And now I stand up, drop the kettlebell back down, switching hands. Throughout the whole movement, I want to make sure that my spine stays Straight. Exercise number two is the power clean and press. We just did a hand-to-hand -hand deadlift. 
and now we use that same position for a different exercise. So the kettlebell is still approximately alongside the middle of my foot. I have a shoulder with stance. Now I'm gonna pull the kettlebell up from this position now. I use my whole body as the kettlebell travels up and then I'm switching the grip, inserting my thumbs inside the window of the kettlebell and my fingers stay on the bell. Looks like this. Now the handle connects with my chest and now I press the bell overhead. Now we'll bring it back down, down to the floor. Now for the final exercise, exercise number three, we do a body weight back squat. I'm grabbing my kettlebell with my hips. Make sure it's not in my close proximity because I don't need it for the last exercise. Now I have still that shoulder with stance. Now I'm hinging and I'm bending my knees as well. And I'm extending my arms in front of me go down as far as I can, hold that position, and then I'll come back up. Now that we know the three exercises, we're gonna do a simple workout. One minute hand-to-hand -hand deadlift, one minute power clean and press, one minute body weight back squat. One minute is running, I bring the kettlebell back. Now, hinging hand-to-hand -hand deadlift, grabbing the bell with one hand, standing up, back down. Other side. Always make sure that your spine is straight. And listen to the way I breathe through the nose in and then through the mouth out. We have a couple of more seconds. Spine's always straight. I'm lifting from my hips, not with my back. Now I drop the bell and I relax. Here come the power clean and press. Same stance, pulling the kettlebell up into the clean. Thumbs in the window, fingers on the bell, press. A couple of more seconds. Breathe in. And we rest. Walk around. Breathe. And now we have the final exercise, a body weight squat. Kettlebell outside my close proximity, hinging, bending the knees, extending the arms, holding that position, back up. And you see, as I'm breathing in, I hold that tension and I come back up. Now maybe if you're huffing and puffing, doesn't matter. Think about these two signals. If your cardiovascular system is not able to catch up and you don't feel well, you want to pause the video, take a longer break. If not, and you're feeling, hey, I think I can push through, you do it. A couple of more seconds, that's the last one. And you did it. You can do three to four rounds in total and make sure that you rest enough in between rounds and in between exercises. And here's the most important tip at the end. You go your own pace. If you have to stop the video as you do the deadlift or as you do the clean and press or when you do the squat, it doesn't matter. You do a couple of reps, three, four, then you have to sit down and relax, doesn't matter. We've all started 
somewhere. Take your time and listen to your body. Your body is probably the greatest coach once you start moving and give your body enough time to adapt. If you don't even have a kettlebell at home right now, you might want to opt in for an 8 kg if you're a woman and you're just starting out, or you want to opt in for a 12 kg if you are a man and you're just starting out. If you're looking for proper kettlebells, we sell our so-called Superflow kettlebells. That's the Rolls Royce of kettlebells. So if you want one, check the link in the description. So here's the next thing that you have to do, like the video, consider subscribing, share this with a friend who also wants to get started, and then check out this video. Here I'm taking another deep dive from a different perspective for kettlebell beginners to understand what kettlebell training is all about. So go watch it right now.